Come on, look, look at your spouse in the eye like when y'all made love. <laughs> look, come on, look at your spouse. Look at your spouse. Look at your spouse. Look at him in the eye. Look at him in the eye. You may have to put your phone down. You may have to put your tablet down. But look at him in the eye and just tell him, we got to work. We got to work. We got to work. We got to work. What do you mean? Learning the rules. I have to work. Now, how do you say that, Pastor? Look at Genesis 29 and 9. We're going to work, y'all. We got to work today. Genesis 29. And look at what it says in verse number 20. <clears throat> I need y'all to catch this. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days. For the love he had for her. Come on, look at me, y'all. Jacob, he worked. That word served me to work. He worked for seven years for one woman, Rachel, and the Bible says it seemed to him but a few days. He worked seven years and it felt like a few days. Because of the love he had for Rachel. Listen at this. Forget about the feelings. The feelings will come. But even if I don't feel it, I've got to have enough love on the inside that causes me to go to work. Come on. If I'm going to have a successful relationship, it's going to require everybody shout work. Now do me a favor, look at your wife, look at your boo, look at your baby, you may have to text them if they're not here, just ask them, are you willing to work? Go ahead and give me an answer, give me an answer, because here's what I've discovered, if I'm not willing to put in the work, the relationship will not grow. Come, ask them again, are you willing to work? I'm, I'm talking about, it. No, 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 make, make, it plain, make it plain, we'll tell them, at this marriage. Are, come on, give me an answer. Are you willing to work? And why is that important, Pastor? Because most Christians are lazy. We don't like to work. I don't want to work or go against how I feel in order for, to make my marriage better. I just want to sit back and point the finger at, the, at my partner as if it's all their fault. Oh, we going there today. We going there. Come on, look at Proverbs 14, 23. Proverbs 14, 23. Everybody shout, we got to work. We got to work. Look at what it says in Proverbs 14, 23. It says, in all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips tended only to purity. And look at what it says. In all labor, there's profit. But the talk, in other words, you can't just talk about having a great marriage. You got to work at it. Talking is good. That's a part of it because I got to talk about it, but I can't just talk about it. I've got to work at it. Come on, ask your spouse again. Are you willing to work? I, I got to work. Come on, look at this in Proverbs 13 and 4. <clears throat> the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Think about this. The people that just talk about having a happy Healthy, successful marriage will never experience it. But those that are willing to put in the work will see the fruit of it. Let me say it this way. Anything you work at, you're going to be good at. LeBron James is good at basketball. You can't teach 6'8". You can't teach somebody to be 6'8". But what you can do is put in the work in the offseason. Think about this. Uh, he said he spends over a million dollars in the off season on his body. The right foods, the right uh, uh, vitamins, having the right nutritionist, the right uh, person trainer to work at $1 million on his body, which has helped him stay relevant for 20 plus years. You know why? Because I can't just talk about it. I've got to put in the work and whatever I invest in, I'll receive the reward from that. <sighs> Come on, look at this. John 13 and 17. Look at what it says. John 13, 17. It says, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I shared this with the couples a couple of weeks ago. We, 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 we know this. And everything I'm going to share in just a moment, it, it won't be nothing new, but it's going to require some work. And just because I know it doesn't make a happy home. It's only when I know it 
And I do it. I do it. I do it. I do it. Come on, look at this. In every marriage, you can write this down. Every marriage, uh, I need husbands, wives. Make sure you take some notes of this. Please take some notes today. I need you to take some notes today. Can, can, let me pause right here and say this. Whenever, listen to this. This is a nugget. Off script. This is a nugget. Whenever I'm going through financially, I need to listen to words. I need to study the word concerning finances. Y'all with me? If I'm having illness, sickness in my body, I need to read scriptures, hear the word concerning my healing. If I'm having issues in my relationships, I don't need to be trying to get caught up in other stuff. I need to be focusing on what the scripture says about a marriage. I need to study the scripture to figure out how to have a healthy relationship, marriage, so forth. So whatever I'm weak in, I need to study in that area so that my life in that area can come up. Are y'all with me today? So, so, so here is what I'm saying. Take no screenshots because although things may be good today, I need this information in my spiritual library so when the enemy shows up, I can go back to it and be able to pull it out. Three things that every kind of marriage needs or three kinds of love that every marriage needs that does not come with the marriage license. Three kinds of love. Y'all ready? The first one is romantic love. Yes, sir. Here's romantic love. In the Hebrew, that's eros or erotic. Eros or erotic. Here's another one. Friendship love. Friendship love or phileo. That's where we get our word. Uh, in, in, uh, Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Phileo, that's love, friendship love. That's brother to brother, sister to sister. That's my friend. Here's the other kind of love we need, which is the foundation for all the other loves. The God kind of love or a agape love. That's the bottom or the foundation by which romantic love and friendship love is built. So these are the three types of love that every marriage needs. But they don't come with the marriage license. We have to build those. And how do we build those, pastors? Let's go to the book. Y'all ready? Look at Genesis chapter 26. Now, I need y'all to stay in on this lesson here. Stay in on this. Genesis chapter 26. Listen to what it says. Verse number 7. Now, I need y'all to catch this, this scripture. I'm going to read these verses, and I'm going to explain this. Look at what it says. When the men of that place asked about his wife, he said, she is my sister. Because he was afraid to say she's my wife, he thought the men of that place might kill me on the account of Rebecca because she is beautiful. That, that, that's what Isaac said about his wife. Come on, look at what it says. Keep going, keep going. She's beautiful. Keep going to the next one. Uh, she, she's beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of Philistines, looked out from the window and he saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebecca. Think about this. He just told them, that's my sister. The king looks out the window and he saw him caressing Rebecca. Go to the next verse. He saw this and look at what the king said. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife. Why did you say she's my sister? Isaac answered him because I thought I might lose my life on her account. <laughs> Look, look at this. Look at, I thought I might lose my life. Go to the next verse. On her account. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might have well slept with your wife. And you would have brought guilt upon us. Go to the next one. You would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people. Anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Now think about this. Stay with me. The king asked Isaac, who is this lady? Isaac says to him, that's my sister, because he was scared. But the Bible says the king go up in his room, he's looking out the window, and he see Isaac down there. One translation says flirting with his wife. And the king is sitting in the chair, and he looks out, he says, that ain't his wife, that ain't his sister. Because there are something, <laughs> listen, stay, stay with me, y'all. We can tell by what the king said, they went down there playing Uno. They went down there playing spades. He knew they weren't shooting marbles. The king looked out and said, that ain't his sister. 
Because there are some things that brother and sister do that husband and wife don't do. There are some things that we do that I, I can't do with my sister. And so the king says, wait a minute, I ain't crazy, but you don't rub your sister like you rub it on her. Here's what I want to say to us. And Isaac and Rebecca did it openly. God help me talk. I, I was in the mall, me and Lady Reem was in the mall one day, and, uh, and we saw a Caucasian couple walking around holding hands. They was an elderly couple. And they was holding hands, just swinging hands, talking. And, and I got behind him, and all of a sudden, he put his hands behind him and tapped on her behind. And she went to jumping and giggling. And so I said, oh, my good, This is so good. This is so good. It's romantic love. I don't know where we get this thing called old folks love and young folks love. There is nothing scientifically proven that says when I get to be 70, 80 years old, I can't have romantic love with my wife. I'm not talking sex. I'm talking about having a romantic relationship where we're close, where we're always involved with each other. The only way that's going to happen is we've got to put in the work. So I want to talk about this. Let's look at this. The first one we talked about is romantic love. Romantic love and romance are relative terms. Listen to this. But we have to discover what's romantic for our spouse. There's no blanket definition that says this is romantic for her and the same thing applies to somebody else. No, no, you have to figure out what is romantic for your spouse because everything changes depending upon the person's makeup and personality. I've, I've told you about later in, I bought flowers and roses before, but she don't really care for flowers and roses. That may change later on, but right now she don't care for it. So me buying her roses and sending them to the job does nothing for her because that's not romantic to her. You've got to figure out what's romantic for your wife. So I know some people are romantically challenged. So I wrote down some things and some suggestions as to how we can be romantic. Right, write, write this down because we're going to go to work in a moment. Write these down. Write these down. Here we are. If, if I was raised in an environment where I didn't see any display of affection, where mom didn't hug me and kiss me, dad didn't hug me and kiss me and, and let me know how great I was. And if I didn't see any of that growing up, then I'm going to be romantically challenged as an adult because I didn't see it at the home. Let me say it this way. Kissing your girls and your sons is healthy when they're young. It's not a sign of weakness. That's affection. And that's what we long for. We have to have it. Statistics say adults or young men that become adults, if they were never hugged and kissed as children, they become less likely to hug and kiss theirs. They're cold, not because they want to be. I've just never seen that in my life. Come on, let's go. Here, here it is. Here it is. Y'all ready? I got about 17, 18 of them. Here it is. Number one, if I'm going to be romantic, number one, everybody shout, do the basics. What is the basics, Pastor? Take a shower. Because it is hard to be romantic with somebody that has a body odor. <laughs> Men, we've got to keep our nails presentable. If we can't keep them manicured, we've got to keep them presentable. Keep our hand. You know, some, like, some ladies like rough hands. You've got to figure out what works for you. Take a shot. Come on, here's another one. Up under that, do the basics. Brush your teeth. Everybody shout for obvious reasons. All right, here it is. Number two, number two, number two. Write this down, write this down. Number two, hold hands as much as possible. As much as possible, hold hands. That, 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 that's not lean. I'm not thinking about sex. It's just affection. I want to show something different. I want to, this is, we're talking about eros, erotic love, romance. Hold hands as much as possible. Here's one. Leave love notes for each other. Think about that. Leave a love note. Baby, I thank you. I appreciate you. Put it in his lunchbox, his lunch bag. Fix it for him. Fix it for her. Oh, I appreciate what you do for the family. Appreciate what you do for the wife. I can't wait to see you when I get home. I hope you're ready. <laughs> Leave some love notes or love texts to your husband, your wife. Leave something nice for him or her. Every now and then. Here, come on, here's another one. Call for no reason. I just want to talk to you. 
<laughs> People that, listen, marriages and couples that talk all the time are close. And you can tell how close they are because they communicate all the time. I don't care when I talk to her. Sometimes I shoot. So Sister Dave is a, a message or I'll try to reach out to her. If I catch her early in the morning, late night, 99.9% .9 of the time, she said, hold on, Pastor. Let me click Brother Dave's in. I'm on the phone with Tyrone. 99.9% .9 of the time she on the phone with him. When I talk to him, for the most part, he on the phone with her. I'm like, how did they talk all the time? This is how you build that together. Communicating. Here it is. Call for no reason. Here's another one. I like this one. Number five. Write this one down. Kiss a lot. Kiss a lot. And here it is. Not always as a prelude to sex. Just kiss a lot. I heard about the story about a man that had kissed his wife in two years. And as soon as she went to this event, they were holding hands, went to this event together. Another man leaned over and kissed on the cheek and he got mad and wanted to fight him. <laughs> the moral of that story is, if you don't. <laughs> Come on, everybody shout, kiss a lot. Sometimes we need to kiss in front of our, in front of our kids. They need to see that effect. I'm not talking about take them in the bedroom and give them a show. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about they need to see some affection from mom and dad. They need to know some healthy ways to love and feel love and how it's reciprocated. So we need to kiss a lot and not, as all, not always as a prelude to sex. Here's another one. Every now and then, share a blanket on the couch. Watch a movie together. Get on the couch on a cold night. Cut down. Just share a blanket together. Do something nice. Come on, here's one. Go for a walk together on a nice night while holding hands. Okay, let me preface it. If you're in a good neighborhood where you can walk like that, if you're in a not so comfortable neighborhood, drive to another neighborhood, park the car, and get out and walk and hold hands. Hold hands with your spouse. Walk. This is building relationship, companionship. Come on, here's another one. Listen at this. Go to breakfast or dinner together without the distraction of a cell phone. Leave the cell phone in the car and just say, babe, depending upon you, because some people are breakfast people, some are dinner people, go to breakfast or dinner with your spouse and just sit there, enjoy one another. When you finish eating, go sit in the car and just talk. Here's what I'm doing. I'm working on my relationship. I'm building something. Ah, come on, write this down. Give a surprise gift for no reason. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just something that lets my spouse know I'm thinking about you. I heard you. Take a surprise. Take a, a weekend trip. Do something spontaneous that lets him or her know that I'm just thinking about you. Ah, come on, write this down. Write this down. To take a vacation or a picnic together. Just the two of you. Just the two of you. Here's what I mean. We do stuff with the kids all the time. But just the two of you go out of town together. Just the two of you go on a picnic together. Just the two of you go to the movies together. Do something together without the kids. Make sure you leave with somebody responsible. But what I'm trying to do is so into my marriage bank so that I'll be able to make a withdrawal. I'm not talking about sex. One day I can make a withdrawal from out of that bank. So I'm building her up. I'm building him up. Come on, look at this. Write this down. Here it is. Sometimes you got to take a ride together to another city to do something. Here it is. Hug a lot. Hug a lot. Can I say it again? I have to keep on. I got to touch all my bases. And not as a prelude to sex. I just want to be close to you, baby. I just, I just want to hug you. Just be close to you. Hug a lot. Come on, here's another one. Give each other a, a massage. Church got quiet right there. <laughs> give each other a massage. Can I, can I go ahead and give the disclaimer again? Not always as a prelude to sex. Just massage your wife or your husband. Do something different for them. Come on, here's another one. Here's another one. Sit in the car and just talk. 
Can I say this? Before we got married, we would sit in the car and do all kinds of things. We would talk. We would hold hands. We'd listen to some music. We'd do all kinds of things before we got married. And guess what? Now that we're in it together, we've got to do those same things in order to keep the relationship strong and healthy. Come on, here it is. Write this one down. Look into each other's eyes sometime and just stare. Now, we can do this while we're in church. Come on, look at your spouse. Look at your, your boo, your bae, your, 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 your fiance. Come on, just look into their eyes. Look into, don't look at the kids. Look into, come on, Mr. Jimmy, look, Mr. Jimmy, look at each other's eyes. Come on, Team David, look at each other's eyes. Just look at each other's eyes. Look at each other's eyes and just stand. Look at each other's eyes. Come on, just look at each other's eyes. Yeah, yeah, just look at each other's eyes. Yeah, yeah, not, 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 not trying to get anything. Come on, look at this. Here's one. You can't do this one in church. Write this one down. Make a note of this. We're, trying, we're talking about erotic love, romantic love, eros. Here it is. Take a shower together. <laughs> Here's my problem. All these kids that all of us got, and when you say take a shower together, we get real quiet. I'm talking about romantic love, eros, with your husband, with your... Take a shower together. Do something that shows the closeness. Oh, God. Here it is. Get some romantic music. Write this down. And dance in the dark. Can I say this, couples? You can even be dirty. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to find out where we at. I'm going to find out where we at. Anybody remember them, them house parties? In the 70s, some of y'all know, I'm a 70s baby, but in the 80s, I remember, the, you remember those house parties? You know the house parties where, to where, uh, the house parties, what they would do at the house parties is, uh, they would have the music playing, the girls would be on one side, the guys would be on another side, and when the music started playing, the lights would go out. Look at it, look at it, look at it, y'all know what time it is. When the lights go out, the guys get up and run, girls get up and we meet, and you got all kind of dancing and stuff going on there. Stay with me, KDD. That wasn't the time to do that kind of dance. It's now is the time. Now that I'm married, you need to do some dirty dancing. But pastor, I can't dance. It doesn't matter if you can dance. You just need to do some dirty dancing with your wife. Oh, they didn't like that one, Holy Spirit. Let's go. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. All right. So that's number 17. Here it is. Number 18. Here, here's number 18. Cause, Cause somebody's saying, but how are you gonna tell me how to handle my spouse and give us some instructions what we need to do? Uh, no, 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 I run my house. I, this is how we handle it. That's good. I got you. Number eighteen is for you. Write this one down. Number eighteen is for you. This for the one that's saying, no, I'm gonna do it my way. Here it is. Number eighteen is for you. I got you. Number eighteen is for you. Here it is. Forget the above. Seventeen things I just gave you, and pray to God that He help you to become selfless. And more thoughtful and intentional about your spouse. Let me say it again. For somebody that's saying, I run my house. I don't need all of that. Here it is. Forget everything I said up until this point, And just pray to God to help me to become selfless and more thoughtful and intentional about my spouse. So you only have one. <laughs> All you got to do is just pray, God, help me to stop thinking about me and my needs and focus on my wife. Focus on my husband. <sighs> God. Come on, here it is. Come on. We talked about romantic love. Here's the other one. Friendship love. Friendship love. Every marriage needs three kinds of love. Romantic love, friendship love, and agape love. Friendship love, phileo, where we get the, uh, the word Philadelphia. The city of brotherly love. Here it is. Friendship love is where we do something together. It's a partnership. It's a companionship. Where we do something together. Even if I don't like what my wife likes, I need to do it because it, it makes her feel happy. Selfishness says, I don't like going to the mall. You go, I'm not going. But if I'm going to build a relationship... And companionship is based off of friendship. I need to find myself doing some things that I don't like doing. 
I told y'all uh, last week, me and Lady Ren slipped away just to, just for her birthday, just slipped away for a few days. And I know she loves going to the mall. She don't like to buy anything. She just likes to go and pick this out, pick it up, put it on, hide this look, put it back, go to another rack. And you know, I, it used to frustrate me so much. I used to get so mad. she go to five or six stores just picking up stuff. Babe, what you think about this? She'll try this on, go in the dressing room, come back. I'm like, oh my goodness, babe. Buy it all, baby, please. She don't want to buy it. She just want to look. But I've learned to just do. We pull up at the mall, and I told her, I said, baby, you want me to go in with you? She said, no, stay in the car. I said, you sure? She said, stay in the car. I said, okay, no problem. I leaned the seat back, and I dozed off. And I asked, I said, babe, I gave her the car to one store. I said, take my car and use the car. She said, no, I got this, I got this. She went in and came out with a bag. She said, I bought this because it was on sale here, and it wasn't on sale in Birmingham. I said, you didn't want to use the car? She said, no. I said, okay, no problem. We, we pulled up at a store. She likes our, our Ross. She likes Ross. So we pulled up. Uh, when we pulled up to the hotel, I saw Ross on the other side of where we were staying out the window. So I did like a smart man. When I went up to our room, Pat, I closed the blinds. <laughs> I feel y'all judging me over here. Let me talk over here. <laughs> I, I closed the blinds. <laughs> she, she didn't even notice it, mother. We got ready to leave. Uh, the next day, and uh, I pulled up. I said, baby, you want some tropical smoothie? She like this drink from tropical smoothie. Yeah, I said, let's go. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. I pulled up the tropical smoothie, and Ross was right there. <laughs> she said, baby, there go Ross. I said, where? She said, right there. I said, okay. And I played crazy. <laughs> so, so, so I said, what you need? She said, I want to go in there. I said, that's fine. Go in. Go in, Ross. So I gave her the card. She said, no, I don't want the card. I said, are you sure? I said, no, it's okay. Go with Ross. Man, take your time. So I'm sitting in the car drinking my smoothie. And then all of a sudden, my phone rings. And it's Keelan. He says, hey, Dad, Mama say, send her that card. <laughs> this is why I say you can't go by your feeling, because I wasn't feeling good then. So I said, tell him to come get it. So he came out and got it, took it in. And when he took it in, I didn't feel good. I'm telling you, I didn't feel good. I was, the smoothie didn't even taste good after that. <laughs> she, she came back to the car with three bags in her hand. And I, and I knew then, I was just waiting. I, I knew then. And I, I said, oh, well, here, I mean, it is what it is. She came back to the car and she gave me the car. And she said, here, the receipt, babe. I said, okay, I didn't even look at it. And she said, I didn't spend that much. I only spent $58 because it was on sale. I said, what? So then I started talking like a boss then. You could have spent more than that, baby. <laughs> we ride down the highway. I said, you ain't no $58 woman. You could have got more than that. That's all you spent? She said, that's all I want, honey. I said, okay, baby, all right, that's good. On the inside, I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. But here it is. I did something. She, here it is. Do something that your spouse likes. It's selfish for me to want them to do everything I like, and I don't want to do anything they like. So even if I don't like the pastor, I don't like going to basketball games. I don't like going to football games. I, I don't like being in outdoor sporting events, but my husband does. Go sit in the stands and act like you like it. That's building friendship and companionship is letting them know, although I don't like this, I value what you like, and I'm trying to build something together. Here it is. It's not everybody, but some men. I don't like restaurant food. I don't like my wife cooking. Selfish, selfish, selfish. So I want my wife to cook seven days a week. Selfish, selfish, selfish. Take her out sometime. God have mercy. Pastor, I can't. We're going to talk about it in the morning. I can't take her out, Pastor. We, we can't afford it. But then I'm posted up. At your mama's every morning eat breakfast. <laughs> Which means I could afford it. My priorities are out of order. <sighs> Come on, friendship love is making sure I do something that she likes that I don't like. Here's what I found out. Listen to this. I told you about the mama experience. Later me likes it. I like it. Can I tell you this? Because I've done it so much with her, I kind of like going out. I like walking around with her now. I mean, I really like walking around with her. And especially, now that I know all she want to do is just pick up stuff and put it back down. <laughs> up. Let's go to this store, baby. Come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I enjoy doing it. Come on, don't, don't 
don't he, he wants to go to the movies. I'm like, don't go to the movies and sit there with your arm folded like this. Enjoy the movie. He's he or she just trying to spend that time together. So three loves, God kind of love, agape, friendship kind of love, uh, uh, erotic kind of love. We're talking about romance. Come on, friendship kind of love, doing something together. Here it is, the God kind of love. This is the last one, the God kind of love, the God kind of love. Here it is, we got to go there. The God kind of love is agape love. Here's what it does, it's forbearing. Let me say this. Everybody, every relationship that's successful today have issues. <laughs> Every relationship has problems. Every man has issues. Every woman has issues. So, and there's no need to be looking down the road at another wife, another woman, another man. I've got my mind right here. I need to deal with the one I've got. Because all of us have issues. All of us have falls, falls, and all of us have faults. We've got to be forbearing, understanding that no matter who I get, they're going to come with some baggage. Forgiving. Ooh, let me pause right here. What is forgiving, Pastor? I can't walk around with bitterness in my heart and resentment because of what my spouse did five years ago. Either I'm going to forgive them and let it go, or if I'm going to stay there, it's not helping them and it's not helping me. I've got to forgive and release it. If I'm going to keep talking about it, it's not going to help them and it's not helping me. But pastor, they did it 10 years ago. Either you're going to forgive them or let them go on. Church got real quiet right there, mother. We've got to forgive. The God kind of love forgives. Because it's not helping me to hold on to it. The God kind of love, listen at this, is selfless love. It's doing things with my spouse that I don't like to do. I don't like to do it. When we first got married, because I had a picture of what marriage was, I never saw my, never, ever, ever, ever saw my dad washing clothes. Never. So in my mind, not that he wouldn't do it, he, I just never saw him do it. Never. Never. We got married. I didn't tell Lady Reed, you got to wash clothes. She just always washed them. And one day, I, I was looking for something, and it was in a dirt truck, and she didn't get a chance to do it. She was working, doing something with the kids. They was in sports and stuff. And so I found myself, I said, I'm going to wash this time. Can I tell you this? To this day, I do all the washing. And I love it. I don't fold all the way now. I don't fold all the time. <laughs> Taking baby steps, baby steps. It's been some years, but I got this washing down pack. I know how much to put in. I, I, I love washing. I, I love washing and getting them out dry. I love it. I, listen, I love it. I love it. I really do love it. I'm working on that fold and then putting them up and stuff. I ain't got that yet, but, but I love washing. It took some time. And then what I found out was this is what she likes. Because it frees her up to where she doesn't have to worry about that. We're going to talk about the love bank in this moment. So a God kind of love is selfless love. Ah, here. What is selfless love? I'm not talking about, listen to this, violating God's word or violating your conscience or compromising your integrity. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about compromising your integrity or, or compromising your conscience. I'm saying do something that you don't want to do that your spouse wants to do to help build a relationship. <sighs> Go to the movies. Go to the mall. Go to the concert. Go to the nail salon. Do something that they like doing because it's making deposits into that love bank. Come on. What are you saying, Pastor? Kingdom thought. Write this down. Here's your page. Why? Kingdom thought. Write this down. Life is not just about what I like, but always consider the feelings, thoughts, and desires of your spouse. Let me say it again. Here's your kingdom, kingdom thought. Put it on the screen for me. Life is just not about what I like. What do you mean, Pastor? It's not just about what I like. It's about considering the thoughts, feelings, and desires of my spouse. It's not just, in other words, it's not a selfish kind of love. It's selfless. 
What do you like to do? Come on, think about it. When's the last time I asked my staff, what do you like to do? Where do you want to go eat? What do you want for dinner? What do you want to do? Let's talk about this. Let's reason. Here is why. Because it's not just about me and my needs. It's about her and it's about him. Come on. Why is that important, Pastor? Here's why I said important. Come on, I need you to get this. Here's why I said important. It's important because if I'm going to have the God kind of love, if I'm going to have erotic or eros, if I'm going to have philatio, Philadelphia type love, that's what builds the relationship. Marriages end in divorce because being married alone doesn't keep me in the marriage. Being friends do. Let me say that again. Being married doesn't keep me in the relationship. It doesn't keep me in the marriage. I'll only stay in the marriage when we're friends. Friendship. That's why every relationship should have a certain level of friendship. Because I'm not going to feel in love all the time. But when we're friends, we can talk about some things that other couples can't talk about. Here it is. Come on. Uh, I'm done right here. Here we go. Come on. Would you put my kingdom nuggets? Kingdom nuggets. Come on. Let's go. With them. Kingdom nuggets. Here they are. I got some nuggets that I wrote down. I told y'all every week, this, this month, every lesson, we're going to put three questions up that we're sitting in. And we're going to deal with it. Come on. Here's some kingdom nuggets that's going to come on the screen. What's the first kingdom nugget? Would you put it up there for me, please? Uh, here's your nugget, and I want to make sure I mention this uh, for today. If we if we having some trouble with getting up, okay, here it is. Successful people live life on purpose. Okay, what's what's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next team? Nugget? Come on, let's go there. What's the next one? I need us to take some notes of this. All right, let, let, let me let me let me start there, and maybe I'll let me start. Okay, my feelings are real. Uh, the kingdom nugget is at the end. My feelings are real, even if they're not right. Let me, let me pause right there. Here's the kingdom nugget. Married couples make, write this down, make a note of this. My feelings are my feelings. They're real. Even if you don't think they're right. This is how I feel. This is how, because all of us have the, a bit, we're two different individuals created by God with a purpose. And I have my own thoughts. I have my own ideas. God didn't create me to think just like you, although you're my wife or you're my husband. I've got my own individuality. But listen to this. My thoughts are my thoughts, even if they're wrong. My feelings are my feelings, even if you don't understand them. We're going to talk about it in a moment. We're going to talk about it in a moment. Come on, here's another one. I, oh, God. Uh, let me show you something. This is what Mary calls. Here it is. Watch this. Uh, Chakaris, do this for me. This, do this for me. Uh, Raven, I need you to. Come here, Chakaris. Bring the baby to. Bring the baby. This is real quick. I want y'all to kiss this. I, I know she won't mess this up. Come here, Raven. Come here, Chakaris. Come here real quick. All right, do this for me. Come here real quick. Because this is what married couples need. Here it is. Give me, give me 10. Give me 10. Y'all go out the door. I know she don't. It's okay. She's going to cry. It's, she's going to cry. Go out the door. Go out the door. Go out the door. All right, she's good. Oh, she did cry. Go out the door. Go out the door. That dad. Tins. That go dad. Look. That dad. That dad and mom. Ten. <laughs> Look, that dad and mom, they're gone. <laughs> See, that's why you got to rehearse with babies that get it. <laughs> Come on back in, your cars. Come on back in, Ray. Here's what I want to say. Here's the point I want to make. Here's the point I want to make. Listen to this. Here it is. I'd rather my kids cry because me and my wife go on a date than for them to cry because we in divorce court. I'm going to say that again. Married couples, we should rather our kids cry because we leave them for a day or two rather than cry because we in divorce court. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Spend time with one another. But my babies, what am I going to do? What are you going to do when y'all sit in divorce court and they're trying to figure out who's going to get custody? I'd rather them cry because we leave and go out of town than for them to cry because we in divorce court. Come on, here it is. Write this down. Oh, this is for parents. Parents, please make a note of this. The call to parenthood is not an excuse to neglect my marriage. The call to parenthood. I got kids, Pastor. It doesn't matter. Your husband comes first. 
I've got children, Pastor. It doesn't matter. Your wife comes first. God is quiet in here, but I'm speaking back for now. It doesn't matter if you got one child or you got 25. None of them come before your husband or your wife. And the church said amen. 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 Just because I'm a parent, it doesn't give me a biblical right to neglect my spouse. <sighs> All right, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Now here it is. I can want you. Mm -hmm. I can want you. Here it is. But I must willing to draw out of you what I need. I'm going to explain that in a moment. <laughs> Hey, catch this. Learn to value. Here's a nugget. Learn to value what your spouse values, even if it's not valuable to you. It, it, <laughs> later in, I didn't know this. She, she likes talking about stuff that I didn't really care about. She, she'll go to the store and she'll come back and say, Oh my God, turnip greens that went up 65 cents a pound, baby. And, and I'm sitting up on Davis. I'm like, Man, well, did you get the greens tonight? <laughs> Did you get the greens tonight? I don't care. I went to Aldi and Aldi had some good fruit. Baby, I picked up this orange and the bottom of the orange. You should have saw the bottom of the orange. And I was like, Did you get the oranges or not, baby? I don't care. I mean, I, I don't care. How, I don't care how much the greens were. Are we, we gonna have greens tonight or not? But she loves talking about it. So I had to learn to listen. And when I found out that was the way she liked to communicate, I just said, oh, really? What, what did, did you check the peaches, baby? What did the peaches look like? What did the peaches look like? And I said, no, I did check the peaches. I'm going to check them next time. We're just talking about oranges and peaches and, and the cost of green. I don't care about that. But I've learned to value what she values. And what I'm doing that, when I'm doing that, I'm just making deposits into that love bank. Shh. <laughs> I'm like, baby, come on, brother. I promise that it took everything in me. I, I messed up a few times because I did. Because I'm like, man, I don't care about the green thing. I really don't. Are we going to have greens tonight? Oh, oh, I mean, what's the deal? What's the deal? And then she had to tell me, no. And then when she shut down, I knew that. Oh, she like talking about this. She, she wanted me to hear this. And, and apples. And I, I, got, I didn't get the bag of apples because I knew we wouldn't eat all the bag. I just got five apples. And, and so now I learned, so, okay, great, baby. Thank you. I eat one today. And then I eat another day. And she gets excited about that. <laughs> Because I'm learning to value what she values. Oh, come on, look at this. Look at this. Come on, write this down. Write this down. I don't know value what she values. Look at this. Oh, God. This is good. This is good. Come on, tell your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your fiance. Tell them you need to remember this one. Somebody didn't say it. Look at them and tell them you need to remember this one. Here it is. Here it is. If I'm not eating my words, I'm not growing. Has to make sense of that. Men, don't raise your hand, but think about it. Have you ever, ladies, to say it, I'll never do that again? I refuse to do that. Here is how you know you're growing because you do it. If I'm not eating my words, chances are I'm not growing. Because in a relationship, in a marriage, we end up eating our words. Because we realize in order for this to work, I've got to give in here. I know I said I'd never, I ain't buying nothing, I ain't buying another pair of shoes, you got too many, I refuse to buy, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself, what size you need again, I mean? <laughs> If you're not eating your words, chances are, I'm not growing. Come on, write this down, listen at this. Why, why, why are we talking about this now, Pastor? Because whenever the church is silent, the devil is screaming. Society would tell us what a kingdom relationship or marriage should be. When God has given us his word. So come on. I, I, this is for pastor. I, I, and some, some of the guys will catch this. Um, <laughs> uh, the older I get, I realize it's not just about sex. Mm. I want her to want me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> not sexually. Oh, oh. <laughs> stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. As we get older, it turned from the physical act to being emotional. I, I want to talk. I want to talk now. I want to talk more now. 
<laughs> See, when, when, when you're younger, when you're in high school, when you're in your twenties, it don't we can fight. And when we finish fighting, come on, man, let's go and do what we got to do. I don't care about all that. We just got to do fight. The older you get, the more emotional it becomes. That's true. That's true. Yeah. We can't argue today. And you talk about in five minutes, come on, let's get. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's true. See, it becomes an emotional thing. Listen to this. Why is that important, Pastor? This is where we get ready to go. Because communication is critical in every relationship. Make a note of this. What is communication, Pastor? It's the transferring of thoughts, ideas, and feelings from one mindset to the next. It's the transferring of thoughts, feelings, and ideas from one mindset to the next. That's what communication is. There it is. There it is. Thank you so much. And the goal, please catch this, ladies and gentlemen. The goal of communication is understanding, not agreement. There are some things me and Lady Ren will probably never agree on, but I understand her and she understands me. So the goal is not to get her to agree with me, just understand me. Understand why I think like I think, why I made the decision I made. So that when we're understanding each other, even if we don't agree, we've communicated. And communication is critical because when I communicate, listen to this, what blood is to the body, communication is to the marriage. I can't have a marriage without communication and I can't live without blood. Well, Pastor, he gets mad and he don't talk to me. And she gets mad, she don't talk to me, she shut down. Can I tell you something? That marriage, that relationship is slowly dying. Because communication is critical to our relationship. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean she, got to, she got to agree with me, but we got to communicate. God, help me talk in here. Ah, but perhaps she don't listen. Come on, write this down. He or she is not responsible for meeting all of my needs. God is, and I need some friends. That there are some needs my wife is not supposed to meet. I need some guy friends for that. And then God handles the rest. But there are some needs that only Angela Ren can meet. She's not responsible for meeting all of my needs. But I got some needs that can't nobody meet but her. Oh God, let me help somebody here. You know what marriage is, and I'm talking about communication and meeting needs? It's kind of like God saying, you can only shop at this store. But then my wife, my husband, won't put out on the shelf what I like. God is saying, you can only shop here. Which means, he knows everything I like, I desire, I need. But if you don't put on the shelf what I like... And God is saying, I can only shop here. Now I'm frustrated. <laughs> Jesus, you're teaching good today. I know it. I know it. It's just part one. Here it is. G give your spouse permission to have needs that you don't have. G give your spouse permission to have needs that you don't have. Pastor, my wife is so needy. No, 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 no. She's got needs that you just don't have or understand. Give her permission to do that. Because she's giving you permission to have some needs that she don't have. Here's one right here. Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. I'm going to talk about this in a moment. Write, write this down. Please write this down. Uh, doing wrong, Pat, that, that's, that's never an excuse for somebody doing wrong. I want y'all to hear this. There's never an excuse for anybody doing wrong. All right? Y'all can read between lines. There's never an excuse for anybody doing wrong. But if my spouse does wrong, I want it to be because they are greedy and not needy. Let me say this again so nobody said Pastor Missy. It's never an excuse for doing wrong. Never an excuse for doing wrong. I don't care how we try to testify. But if he or she does do wrong, I want it to be because they just greedy and not needy. Wow. That's deep. That's deep, huh? 
my grandmother years ago would say, as many times as he can jump up, you make sure he sit down. All right, grown folks got that. When he leaves out of this house, I don't have to worry about anything because he don't have energy to do nothing but go to work and come back. And if he does do something, he just greedy. He ain't needed because I'm going to make sure I take care of all of that. God, help me talk in here. Remember, God says he can only shop at this store. But if you decide you're going to put some stuff back in the back and not show it to him. They didn't like that one, mother. They didn't. Let's, let's go on to the questions. Let's go on to the questions. I got three kingdom questions and I'm done. Three kingdom questions. Come on. We got some other questions we'll deal with next week. Come on, right, right now. What's the question? What's the first question? Let's deal with it. Uh, <laughs> they didn't like, no, here it is. What do I do when my spouse expects so much from me? And no matter what I do or give, it doesn't seem adequate. While I'm giving, I feel as though I'm not being appreciated. <laughs> that's good. Um, <clears throat> that, that's a good one. That's real good. Let, let me say this. <sighs> oh, that's loaded. So um, while I'm giving, I don't feel as though I'm appreciated. Let's say this. I want to say this one word. Communication. I must communicate with my spouse constantly. Now, here's the problem. When one spouse likes to talk and another one doesn't, that's going to be a problem. That's a problem. And let me say this. We cannot have a healthy relationship if we don't communicate. I have to be able to share with you even Talk some uncomfortable, we'll talk about it at the moment. Some have some uncomfortable conversations, but I've got to be able to talk with you about some things that I'm dealing with, and you've got to be able to express yourself without judgment. And then also, we've got to be able to come to some common agreement and understanding, rather, so that we can propel the relationship to the next level. So, what do I do? I'm praying, but I can't stop communicating to them how I feel. Whether it's male or female, I'm doing everything I, I think I'm supposed to do. I pray to God about it. I'm working. What do you, here it is. What do you need from me? How can I be a better wife? Because here's the question I always say, and it's, 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 it's a nugget for you. If I want better children, be a better father. I want a better wife, be a better husband. God. So I'm putting it all back on me saying there's something I can do to make her better. There's something I can do to make him better. So I've got to communicate, sweetheart, baby, what else do you need me to do? I thought I did this right, but you're saying I'm not doing it. Tell me, and when I feel like I'm not being appreciated, I need to express that. I can't shut down and say, well, I just ain't going to talk. I ain't gonna, I'm going to show them how I feel. No! Kids don't talk. Kids get mad with each other and go sit in the corner and don't talk to each other for a while. Grown folks talk. You can't be grown when it's time to get into bed, but want to be a child when it's time to talk. Somebody shout, you preaching good, Pastor. I got to man up and let's talk. Let's have the tough conversation. So I got to communicate. If I, if I feel like I need to express that to him or her. How I'm feeling. Remember what I said earlier. My feelings are real even if they don't understand them. They're my feelings. This is how I feel. And I've got to be able to express how I feel without the fear of them going or hitting me below the belt. But everything stands on the foundation. Everybody shout this word with me. Communication. Got to communicate. Got to communicate. Go, go to the next one. Communicate. Gotta communicate. Gotta communicate. How do you propose we have tough, hard or tough talks about our personal needs being fulfilled or the lack thereof? Uh, um, I'm going to give you this. I, I, I prayed over this one. I thought about it. I'm going to give you something that me and Lady Ren worked on because it depends on the, the person, their personality. You can talk to some couples. You can talk to your spouse or husband. It depends on their personality and just share with them. I, I need you to step up in this area. I feel like I'm not getting enough uh, quality time. 
they may or may not go left on you. What you mean? I'm paying all the bills. What you mean? What you saying? I got the cable on, baby. What you mean? You know, they may go all the way left. <laughs> so that may not work. That may not, that may not work. May not be able to communicate. Okay? May not be able to communicate. So here it is. Let me, let me show you what we do. Because we've had those issues. Let me, let me show you. One of the things we come up with, and, and I want to give this to you. you. You figure out what works for you. But, but here's something I want to talk about. Because I talked about this in the couples thing, and I left one out. In, in the couples fellowship, we talked about this. Um, the five love languages, but that's something else I wanted to add to it. The five love languages, number one, there's, there's one that's receiving gifts. My husband, my wife, they like to receive gifts. That's, that's their love language. They love to receive gifts. They have to be big, just receive gifts. Here's one. Um, receiving gifts, here's the words of affirmation. Uh, they just like to be affirmed, like to hear their spouse say. Now, let me pause and say this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, obsessive guys, listen to this. If, 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 if your spouse... Uh, comes into the house with a new hairdo and you don't acknowledge it, that's a problem. You should be the first one to see it. Because see, here's what happens. When they get around somebody else at work and they say, oh, that hairdo looks good on you, girl. Now, she never heard that at home. Thought she was looking for it. I didn't get it at home. So now he just said, that looks good on you. He don't mean anything other than it looks good on you. She said, oh, really? Oh, thank you. And now he just slid in talking. Now he ready to talk some more now. <laughs> I know your husband told you that. No, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> and if you was mine, I'd be telling you that. Every, and there it go. <laughs> Same way with guys. Man, you go to work all the time for your family. Every time I see you, you working, you working, you working. I know your wife appreciates you. No, oh, she ain't told me that in a while. <laughs> Every time I get a text, she told me she want me to do this. She want me to buy this. She want me to fix this. She want me to take her this place. Every time I talk to her, that's all I'm getting. She don't appreciate what I do. Now, here it is. Really? A hardworking man like yourself? I wouldn't want you to be buying me all that stuff. I want you to stay, baby. Now, here it is. Because he's not hearing it at all, he like going to work. <laughs> that's real. He love going to work. He don't mind working 18 hours because she's stroking his ego. Oh, that's good. Here's what the Bible says. A wise woman builds her house. Starting with her man. Words of affirmation. Here's another. Come on, write this down. Here. QT, quality time. Quality time. Some, some ladies, this is, I'll, I'll share this. This is one of my wife's top uh, love language. Quality time. She doesn't want to spend quality time. She wants to spend time together. Doesn't matter what we do, where we go. She doesn't want to spend quality time together. Quality time. Call the time, whatever it is, okay? Here's one. Uh, acts, acts, acts for service. Uh, you know, acts of service, you cook dinner, you wash the clothes, you clean up the house, pick up the keys, do some things. Do something for me that I don't have to do. And then here's one, physical touch. PT, physical touch. We know what that is. Not talking, just leading to sex, but just physical touch. Just want to be touching close to them. And we know we can't leave there. Catch this. So, so, so look at this. Here's one we talked Here's one we talked about. Affection. Affection, affection. Uh, affection. Uh, here's why I say affection and I added this in there because um, I always I'm married, okay I always, when I see later in I told the coach, I see her, uh, no matter where I am I try not to do it around church I always grab on her butt, I always, I love it I always, you know, when we be walking or we be in the store, I stick my hand she got a pocket, I just stick my hand inside her pocket I got my hand around, I got my hand inside her pocket I just be squeezing on her, her, her booty a little bit and I love touching her butt, I just love it that's just me, I, I'm married, though. I love touching her butt that's that's my butt, so I can touch it. I can touch it. <laughs> Y'all look at me funny like. <laughs> you gotta talk to him, Pastor. See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? Uh, yes, Lord. <laughs> she teaches children to search your heart. So, 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 come here, baby. Let me touch you right quick. <laughs> okay, see. So, look, look. look. So, that, I love doing that. I love doing it, alright? I love doing it. So, here's what we found out. Uh, that's, she, she don't like that all the time. Stop, babe. Stop, babe. Stop, babe. I'm like, uh-uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm, like so I figured out what she likes for affection is not just that. I'm thinking I'm being affection. That's not what she likes all the time. So here's one way to have that tough conversation. Here it is. Ready? It's to sometimes put things in Ziploc bags and put it in cups. Here's the best way to handle it. You figure out what works for your house. It, it, you got your cups, you got your words of affirmation, your um, receiving gifts, all that. Here's one way to have it, sweetheart. How's your cup this week? What cup? Your, your, your quality time cup. 
The only answer they can give you is, I'm full. Uh, it's a little half empty, baby. Oh, good. I know what I need to work on. How is, how, how is your receiving gifts cups this week? How is your cup doing this week? Uh, it's kind of low. It's kind of low. Now I know what I can work on. I, 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 I've disarmed him or her from being able to come back at me. Now I'm just asking him, how is the affection this week? Am I doing okay in that area? No, it's a little bit low. Okay, no problem. I work on it. I work on it. Because I want that thing to be full and overflowing. So figure out what works for you. And then you have to implement that in the relationship so that it keeps the lines of communication strong. I'll go to the last one. Go to the last one. I'm done. Go, go to the last one. I'm done. What, what's the last one? And this one right here missed me. A pastor, and this is a female, of course. <laughs> I told my husband everything about me. He still feels like his classmate is his best friend. Why doesn't he talk to me like he talked to him? Ladies, <laughs> this is this is a gender answer here. Ladies, let, let me give you the answer to this. Listen to this. That's that's loaded, but let me say this. And this is for all ladies. The goal in marriage is for my husband and my wife, if we're not that when we get married, to become best friends. That's the goal. There are some things I, I will tell my friend that I won't tell my girlfriend. When I first get married, there's some things my friend may know about me that my spouse may not. But as we grow, we should be coming so close together that my wife or my husband becomes my best friend. It's like this. The reason, and there are multiple, but, but, but the reason, number one, that he does not tell you everything is because he feels safe with his friend. If he's not sharing everything with you, it's because I haven't made him feel safe. God, listen to this. Because wherever we feel safe, we'll talk. If he's not sharing his weaknesses, the things that hurt him, his fears, it's because I have not cultivated an atmosphere where he feels safe enough to. Or maybe he shared some things with me to see how I was going to handle it. And I used it against him in an argument. You ain't never old punk. Just because you ain't had no dad in the house. Your dad, that's why you acting like that without. You ain't never a punk. Now that I done told you how I made me feel by not having a dad. You done hit me with that. That man is shut down. So now he's communicating with his friend. Because his friend is not going to judge him. He's going to make him feel safe. And the church got quiet. So it becomes my responsibility to create an atmosphere and an environment where she and he feel safe to talk to me. Knowing that I can share things with my husband, my wife, and not have to worry about them bringing it back up no matter how mad they are. They know I can't use that. Because that's fighting below the belt. And if I'm going to get him or her to open up more, they got to feel safe. And men that don't feel safe at home, listen to me, will work 24 hours just to keep from going home. Past my husband is a workaholic. He stay, he stay on the job. That, I, he be telling me they making it work overtime. I don't believe that. I believe he be signing up overtime. That's because every time he get home, I'm just like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why you ain't do this? What you gonna do this? But he walk in the house, get in the garage. Hey, what you gonna do this? He's like, man, I, I'd rather go back to work. Let me clock in. Let me clock in. I don't want to hear that. I'm telling you the truth. Men will work 16 hours a day just to keep from going home when I should be working eight hours. Can't wait to get off the clock so I can get home to my safe zone. If I make him feel safe, he will run. He'll run traffic lights just to get home. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Why? Because I created an environment by which it's his sanctuary. 
and vice versa for ladies. We've got to make them feel safe. To where when they get home, they want to be there. Can I tell you what it takes? I'm done right here. It takes work. Come on, look at your spouse. Look at your boyfriend. Look at your girlfriend. Your fiance. Look at your husband. Look at your wife. And just ask them this question. Are you willing to work? I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the past. I'm not talking about what happened. I'm not talking about what we did. Are you willing to work? Because if you're not willing to work, we're not going to make it. Meaning, it can't be your way. It can't be my way. We've got to figure out the best way so that we can get the relationship where it needs to be so God can get glory. Because there's a purpose for this relationship. Here it is. I'm done. What is part one, Pastor? What is part one? Here it is. If I'm going to make my marriage matter, I've got to learn how to play by the rules. Play by the rules. Play by the rules. When you know the rules to the game, you have an advantage. And any time I don't play by the rules, there's a penalty on me. Husbands, it's our responsibility to love, nurture, cover, provide, protect. It's our responsibility. But at the same time, ladies, listen to me. You have something on the inside that can increase and encourage that. It's your response. Here's what the Bible says. A wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman tears it down. Can I, can I say this? He's not perfect, but he does pay the bills. That's, that's I give him plus for that. I'm not saying that's the that's the no no. He's doing something. Let's give us all. He's not perfect. He ain't cussing me out. He's not perfect, but he takes care of his responsibilities. He's not perfect, but he's not putting his hands on me. Which means we can work through some of this other stuff. It's just problems. She's not perfect, but she does cook. She's chased at home. She takes care of the children. She helps you out. She's not perfect. She's not dogging you out to her friends. She's not dogging you out to the family. She's not perfect. We all have flaws, but if we're going to have a successful kingdom marriage, it's going to require work. 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 Everybody shout work. I'm done. I'm done. I want, I want to end this way. If you will, look at your wife, your husband, your fiance, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever. Look at them. And just ask them this question. Are you willing to work? God is going to get glory out of our relationship. He's going to get glory out of our marriage. But no matter what God's design is, if we don't put in the work, it'll never happen. Because abuse is inevitable when I don't know the purpose of it. If I don't know the purpose of it, I'm going to abuse it. Let me see that microphone later on, if you don't mind. Let me see that microphone. Think about this. If I don't know the purpose of it, if I don't know the purpose of this microphone, and no one can tell me the purpose of this microphone, but the creator. The creator of the microphone created it with a purpose in mind. I can take this microphone and give it to Minister Brandon to use as a door stopper at the door. And guess what? It'll keep that door open. But eventually this microphone is going to break and tear up. Because it's operating outside of its designed purpose. And in a relationship, in a marriage... If I don't understand the purpose of my spouse, if I don't understand the purpose of my, why God allowed us to come together, it wasn't just so that we could make a little junior. It's so that God brought us together so that not only could we be fulfilled, but we could also establish some things in the earth and we could get further ahead in advancing his kingdom agenda. There is a purpose and a call for us coming together and it's not just to come together to look good on social media. It's got to be bigger than that. There is a purpose. And if I don't understand the purpose of my wife, I'll cuss her out. 
If I don't understand the purpose of my husband, I'll make him feel small. But when I understand the purpose, I speak life into him. I speak life into her. I build her up. I build him up. Because I want God to get glory out of this relationship. Can I say this to us? And I'm done. Even if we made mistakes in the past, God can use our relationship to help strengthen it and show our children or grandchildren or some other people. If you put God first, everything will work out. Everybody's standing. I'm going to pray. Uh, listen, listen at this. Mr. Jimmy, will you come? Mr. Tippin, will you come real quick? Will you come real quick? Brother Davis, do you mind coming? Do you mind coming real quick? Come, come up real quick, Brother Davis. Um, you dressed up, so you're going to be God today. You're going to be God today. <laughs> come on, God. Come on, God. Come on, God. Come up here, Mr. Jimmy. Come up here, Mr. Jimmy. Come up here, Mr. Jimmy. Look at, look at this. He's God. Just stand in the middle, Brother Davis. Stand in the middle. Mr. Jimmy, you go on one side. Your wife on one side. Here it is. Listen at this. He's God. Here is how kingdom relationships should be. When I'm single, when I'm dating, even when I'm married. Because I tell people this. Husbands that don't like your wife being close to God. Wives that don't like your husbands being close to God, involved with things of God. You have a problem. Because they can't love you properly if they don't understand the love of God. You should want your spouse to be connected to God. <laughs> so, so God is the man. Here it is. Minister Tim, Miss Tim, she's running after God. You just want God. You just want God. Just get close to God. Grab God by the hand. Some names ain't going to bother you. See, good. Don't worry about some names. Don't worry about some names. We got help. We got help. All right, Sister Davis. All right, now, y'all y'all watch Sister Davis. All right, this example purpose is on. All right, get closer. Get closer. She just wants God. Mr. Jim, just get close to God. Get close to God. Get close to God. Get close to him. He, he just wants, all he wants is God. So if his desire is to please God, he just wants God. Her desire is to please God. All she wants, she's not thinking about him. She wants God. So as they come closer to God, God brings them together. When they come together, they still have to be seeking God. Here's the problem. In most couples, come on, y'all, come here, come here. In most couples, we may go to God first, but once we get God, just go ahead and go to him, go to him, go to him. Now, leave God, leave God, leave God, leave God, leave God. Yeah, leave God, leave God, leave God. Here's what happens. We left God. We try to make it work on our own. I'm talking to her on my own. I'm talking to him on my own. We're going to handle this ourselves. So he's got her. She's got him. But neither one of them got God. And because they don't have God, they don't have a foundation or the glue that's going to keep them together. So when issues come, he's left to deal with it on his own. When problems come, she's left to deal with it on her own. And here is God over here saying, come to me. I, I, I'm not going to force myself into your life, but I'm standing here saying, I can fix this. I see what y'all are going through. I can fix this. But he has to be willing to go back to God. She has to be willing to run back to God. And when they go to God, here it is. Because the owner or the creator of him knows how to fix him. He knows how to fix her. I've told y'all this before. So, so many got a new car. She got a new car. If something happens to your car, so open it. Where do you take it? To the mechanic. Which mechanic? Where well, you bought it. She's taking it to the dealership. You know why? She's not going to take it to, listen to this. Oh, who is it? Oh, Pat, Pat, my classmate in the back. He know how to change all and put transmissions in. You're not going to take it to Pat? She said, Pastor, I trust you, but I ain't been Pat get on my transmission. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you know why she's going to take it to the dealership, the manufacturer? Because the manufacturer knows what's wrong with it. The manufacturer made the vehicle. So the manufacturer knows how to fix what's wrong. And here it is. Oftentimes, I'm talking to other people or my spouse about their problems. And God is saying, I'm the one that made them. Talk to me about them. I know how to fix them. Could it be I don't talk to God because God said before I fix them, I'm going to fix you. So, so now they, they realize they can't make it by themselves. So Minister Jimmy gets a revelation. I got to go back to God. Things will 
going good when I was with God. I had a little money when I was with God. My wife was talking to me like a king when I was with God. We had a great relationship when I was with God. She realized how great of a relationship they had when she was with God. She said, wait a minute. He's getting closer to God. So she comes back to God. Now here it is. Now that we've got God at the center of the marriage, the marriage can't help but to be successful. Because no matter how we align it, if God is not in the center of our marriage, he don't follow us. So I can't grab her and say, come on, God, go with me. God said, no, 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 I'm going to lead. And if you allow me to lead, I can stop you from some of the people. See, it is. When she's got an issue with him, because problems happen in all of our marriages, she got a close relationship with God. She ain't got to cuss him out. She can talk to God. God, I need you to handle this. Look at how he's talking to me, God. I don't know what he's dealing with, but this is not how I was praying. God, you got to do something. And because she talked to God and she didn't talk to her friends or her family about her man, God can whisper in his ear and get him straight. There you go. There you go. Y'all heard God. Get yourself together, buddy. And God, look at this. She don't know what God did. He done came home and got a whole new attitude. Because she talked to God. Because he talked to God. And the manufacturer knows how to fix us. Here it is. If we let him. If we let him. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. What I want to say to us today is this. We got to get self out of the way. And put God back in his rightful place. So that our relationships can flourish. If you're sitting beside your wife, your husband, your significant other, would you just reach out and grab them by the hand real quick? Everybody reach out and grab somebody by the hand. Leave nobody untouched. Pastor, we ain't been clicking in the last several months. It's okay. It's all right. It's all, right. It's all good. That's all right. That's part of it. We've been there. We've been there. Know how that is. That's right. Thank you. Reach out and grab somebody by the hand. Leave nobody untouched. If you're holding your spouse's hand, just whisper in the ear. Just tell them our relationship is going to be your relationship that makes God proud. Come on, say it again. Our relationship is going to be a relationship that makes God proud. And other kingdom couples can look to us and see God through our lives. We don't have to just have up days and down days. We can have a consistently good marriage if we keep God first and if we communicate, talk about it, and give each other permission to be individuals. Squeeze that hand, squeeze that hand, squeeze that hand. Father, I'm praying for every family that's represented in here. Every husband, every man, every wife, every woman, every fiance. Relationships that may be on the edge. Because God, we slipped away from you. We got the person we wanted. But we forgot you. We got the house we wanted. But we forgot you. We got the job that we wanted, God. But we forgot you. Some of us, God, we got the child or the children that we wanted. But we forgot you. Father, I realize even now that we can do nothing without you. My husband needs you. My wife needs you. Our relationship needs you. We're asking you to come back into our homes. Help us to build that marriage that's pleasing to you. Father, we want other people to see our lives and want to emulate and be just like us. We thank you, God, for giving us the grace to be more intentional about listening to our spouses. Father, help us to cultivate an atmosphere by which my husband feels safe. Help us to cultivate an atmosphere by which my wife feels safe, by which we can talk with one another, we can communicate. Father, I thank you right now that our children will make the same mistake we made. Help them to pick right.
help them to wait until a God sent man comes their way until a God sent woman comes their way father we speak right now to every negative word that's been spoken over your people's life our relationships will flourish our relationships will thrive they won't just survive but they're going to be great in every aspect of the relationship we speak it now God for every marriage from the bedroom to the bank account let them overflow in every area of their lives we're committing ourselves to putting in the work being selfless and being more intentional about pleasing you to that end God we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise in the marvelous majestic name of our master we do pray let every glad heart say amen Listen, if you're sitting beside your wife, your husband, your significant other, just lean over to them. Just give them a kiss. Not just, 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 a, just a kiss. That's it. That's it now. All right. We ain't giving nobody no show. Just give them a kiss. Just give them a kiss. Let them know we're going to make it. Come on. Let them know we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Come on. Give me that light. Give me that <laughs> Watch out. Now.